Time seems right. The indicators are all there, telling you that now may be the right time to start or continue your portfolio. You're feeling financially secure, but you want to improve your potential future income. You know that the capacity for the government to provide for your retirement needs is limited and that you must do something for yourself. But you can't do it. Something within is throwing up all manner of challenges for you and you simply can't bring yourself to hold your breath and take that leap. And as you procrastinate, the years keep rolling on and you know without doubt that you'll look back and regret that you didn't take the chance when you could have. In all of the years that I've been assisting people to buy property, I've discovered that all of the knowledge in the world can still do very little for some people. It's the psychological factors which become the barriers that prevent many people from investing success. Knowing what these factors are and then identifying your own personal psychological barriers so that you can remove them is the most important first step to take as an investor. The first factor is the fear of losing your home. If you've already achieved a comfortable debt level and have considerable equity in your own home, you may worry that making the wrong choice will lead to financial ruin. The likelihood of this is very small and this fear must be put into perspective. To deal with this fear, work out the worst case scenario and ask yourself if you can afford that outcome. If not, then you shouldn't buy, but it's more likely that the worst thing to come out of a failed property investment is an increased personal debt that you can probably manage. And remember, the actual likelihood of this result is very small anyway. The second fear is that you'll not be able to afford to repay the debt if the property is vacant. When people first begin to consider this possibility, they imagine that there'll possibly be months in which no income's being achieved and that they'll be required to meet the mortgage repayments from their own pocket. In fact, unless your property is damaged so that it can't be occupied and landlord's insurance can cover this event, it's more likely that a small reduction in rent can attract a tenant in most markets. The last common fear is the fear of making the wrong choice. Buying a property involves making a large purchase. Even if you borrow all of the money and use little or none of your own, your commitment is a big one. Why is it then that people so carelessly choose property using all manner of emotional reasons to buy? Investors mistakenly believe that they can use a gut feeling about property or base their choices around what they would personally like to live in. Worse still, they follow the crowds, take advice from their unqualified friends, buy a property in their dream location near the beach, and largely put faith in people who have a vested interest in their purchase, like the person selling the property to them. It's no wonder so many bad choices are made. You can never remove all of the risk when you invest in property, but you can manage it and increase the chances that what you buy will work out well. However, you can only do this by becoming educated first. The reason I developed the 20 must ask questions was to provide a benchmark, which becomes the minimum criteria that a property and area must display before it becomes likely to perform well. If your fear is that you will choose badly, then leave your emotions at home, learn how to invest well, and arm yourself with the 20 must ask questions. Then commit to buying only property which can satisfy them.